hello and welcome to today's video. As you can very clearly see, I have the Coronity Ender 3 V3 and I'm just going to be covering, putting it together and my thoughts on it. You can see I've already printed a headband there. So this comes with a very nice glass touchscreen. You've got the spring steel bed that's obviously magnetic to the actual heated bed itself. And while you did have all metal frames originally, this frame basically just comes in two parts, which made it so much nicer to put together. You can see aesthetic wise, it's so much nicer as well. You've got a nice high quality rounded frame to it. And of course the spool holder on the side with a anti-tangle attachment to it as well. So it arrived on my doorstep like this and you can imagine a very overwhelmed me uh, being sent this by Creanity. So this is where it'll be living and this is obviously where I'll be putting it. They did include two reels of Hyper PLA, uh, it's all black, and of course the UK adapter because an American one wouldn't be much use to me. You've got the instruction guide, as well as a few stickers in the back. I always love when you get stickers, I don't know why, but I'm a big sticker enjoyer. Uh, you get another reel of PLA that comes with the printer as standard. You get your box of tools. In the brown packet at the very front that you can see there uh, are the wire cutters for cleaning up your prints. You also get some zip ties just for cable tidying in general. Then you get the spool holder, and of course Caveman Brain just sold two things that fit together and I immediately put them together. Uh, I think I actually put it on the wrong way. And then of course you've got your touch screen here, your display screen, touch screen, same thing. Love that they always come in metallic silver mirrored bags. Then you've got your Bowden tube and more cable tidies. So now reading through the instructions before I go and actually start putting this thing together, I like to get a basic understanding of the instructions first so that I don't have to revisit them quite as much when I'm putting it together. That's personal preference though. And you can see there I'm attaching the spool holder immediately. Uh, it doesn't say to do that, I just wanted to get it set up and out of the way. There's the anti-tangle device that they've included. It's actually 3D printed, which is quite interesting. And then of course there's the UK plug back there. Now you can see me attaching this, do make sure you flip the voltage switch to the correct level. Obviously you've got two different levels on there for different mains depending on what country you're in. It wasn't the correct one for me personally so I didn't have to switch it. But do make sure you've checked that because once you've screwed this in, it, you can't access the switch again. It's hidden in that little alcove. You've got four bolts on each side. They're very simple to actually put in. You basically just slide the main uh, gantry on top of the base put the screws in, and that's your main assembly done. So bringing out the screen now, freeing it from its mirror cage. This is the only part I actually had issues with, I was struggling to get the ribbon cable in. Uh, you can see my fingers actually bending as I try and clip it in. Might be a big hand problem. Uh, might just be me, but I did struggle to get that ribbon cable into the actual screen. So I'm just connecting all the wires all across the printer, obviously referring to the instructions as I go. Just making sure everything's plugged in the correct place. You can see all the sockets there as well. Again, it might just be me, but I find this bit really therapeutic, actually plugging everything together, getting it all connected. You can see they're attaching the Bowden tube and then pushing the lock down so that it holds it in place. And this is a nice little tidy device for the back of the actual extruder. So all the cables that come out the back, or say it's one big thick cable, you can lock it down so it doesn't move around very much. And then you've got more cable tidies that actually clip the Bowden tube to that main cable, which is really satisfying to do. Nice and tidy look. Then also just prepping this PLA so that I can get a print started. Interestingly, this actually reels underneath rather than over the top. And if I'd attached the anti-tangle device at this point, I wouldn't have been dealing with it unspooling like that. Plugging the actual mains power in. You can see I haven't plugged the PLA into the extruder yet or locked that Bowden tube in. That's because you need to wait for the hot end to actually be heated so you can make sure that the PLA is going all the way through before you lock it into place. So 
just adjusting it so it's actually in a nicer area. You can see you've got a nice light on the hot end itself, on the extruder. Very nice touch. And this is it self calibrating. It does make an interesting noise. Now this did worry me originally because obviously that noise is it's quite loud. Uh, it is meant to do that. So you know, don't panic. It does sound like it's about to take off. It's completely fine. That is just it calibrating itself. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's doing. You can see me trying to edge it towards the end of the table because that plate did just shoot forwards. I don't want it to shoot back into the wall and damage itself. So do make sure you've got a nice amount of space around the printer when you're setting it up. Because you'll see in a minute it does fire back as well. There you go, that's it shooting forwards, and that's it shooting back. So it is a good job I moved the printer forwards, because it would have collided with the wall had I not. So do make sure you've got that space, like I said. Now I have sped this up, this isn't obviously its actual speed. I will show you its normal speed with one of the prints that I do. You can see just heating up the actual end so that I can run the PLA through it. Which is what I'm doing here. Once that's in, you flick the lock and it locks the Bowden tube in place. And obviously you can undo that for removing PLA. Now without the USB, these are already loaded onto the actual machine itself. Running a Benchy, love a standard Benchy. You can see the anti-spool, anti-tangle uh, device coming in to play on that spool there. This is it calibrating itself, bed leveling. Obviously this is sped up. Uh, this was a time lapse. I'll tell you when the time lapse ends. It's surprisingly quick, like I knew it was going to be fast, I didn't think it would be as fast as it is. The Benchy itself took 13 minutes from start to finish, which is mad. So this isn't sped up, this is actual footage of how quick this printer moves. And this is what a time lapse would have looked like of my old printer, which was the Ender 3 V2. So the fact that this almost still looks like a time lapse and this is just real time, this is exactly how it prints. You can just imagine how quick this thing would be for printing anything. Like I said, 13 minutes to print a Benchy. This is, I mean, probably the fastest printer I've ever owned. And you'll see in a minute just how quality the prints actually are as well with that speed. That's also why you've got the sturdier frames to account for the speed. I imagine if you were using the old frame from the Ender 3 V2, with this kind of speed, it would rattle itself to death. You can see they're using the bed just to pop the print off. I can see no major flaws in this print at all. Like this print has some insane quality for the fact that it printed in, again, 13 minutes. So here are all the test prints that came loaded on the printer already. Again, they weren't on the USB, they were on the printer itself. This printer has some amazing capabilities to it. Um, I'm not typically an FDM printer, like in terms of what I use for printing. But this is a game changer for the stuff that I do use FDM printing for. Now I believe this print took around 20 minutes. I'm not entirely sure. But again, I know that it was quick because I remember putting it onto print, coming back and it was done. And then the fact that it prints this, again, at speed with just such a level of quality. You can see some stringing there, but like most people would do, if you take a lighter to it, that stringing goes. And there's very little inconsistencies here. You can see that one spike at the back that's kind of crooked, this one here. 
But again, aside from the stringing, there's no major issues here. The overhangs it's able to print. The detail it's able to get. I mean, you can see the tolerances by the fact that those, what, five cylinders drop straight out. I'm absolutely blown away by this. So now printing something I want to do, I got this file off thing of us. Uh, I'll link it in the description if I remember. I tend to forget to do stuff like that. But yeah, so this is the Wi-Fi capabilities. I don't even have to take the USB from laptop to printer. The printer itself is set up on my local network. So I can just click print from my laptop once I've got the file sliced. You can see there it's sent it. And it's already started. It does also calibrate itself before the prints, checks the bed leveling. So you don't have to do anything except for make sure the print bed is actually clear before you run another print. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. Half an hour print. I did need a hairband uh, and this has just saved me the effort of going and getting one. But as we come to the end of this video, I just want to say thank you for Coranity sending me this. And if you are interested in picking up this printer, there will be a link in the description. Um, not entirely sure if it's available as of recording this video, but there will be a link in the description to the store. This printer is incredible. I'm a huge fan of it. But yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.